Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This week we're going to be looking at some post-processing in Lightroom. And in particular, we're going to be looking at noise reduction and sharpening for macro images. So noise reduction and sharpening are two common tools which are used all the time with photography. But I want to look in particular at macro because in those types of images, you tend to get your background really thrown out of focus and your foreground, your subject, usually an insect or a flower, in focus and with a lot of detail. And that causes a conundrum when you're sharpening and reducing noise in an image. Because the more you sharpen an image, the more noise you introduce. So the conundrum is that you want your background nice and smooth without noise, but you want your subject also to have minimum noise, but you want it to be sharp. So what do you do? Do you, do you reduce the noise or do you make it sharp? So we're going to be looking at how you can do that and get good results with your macro photography. Okay, so this is the image we're going to work on. I captured this shot in a recent video, and if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link up top for you to go back and watch that. But this little ladybird is running about, it was evening time, so the light was getting a bit low. I did have an LED light, but even still, I didn't have a lot of light to play around with. And because it was quite active, I needed a fairly high shutter speed. So I've gone for 1 320th of a second, and my F number is about F16. I couldn't really go lower than that because if I had have done, I think areas of the ladybird would have started to go out of focus. So I've got F16, 1 320th of a second in low light, and that's giving me an ISO of 4000, so quite high, and it's introduced quite a bit of noise into the image. You might not be able to see it here, but if I zoom in to 400%, you can start to see that now, especially in the background. Got these large areas of noise. So what we're going to do is use Lightroom Classic just to reduce the noise, add a little bit of sharpening where needed, and generally just create a better image. So I'm not going to go through all of my colour and tone edits for this, but basically you can see the original there. All I've done is just brought down the highlights, increased the shadows, added a little bit of contrast and tweaked the colour just a little bit. But we're going to dive straight in now to the detail panel, which is here and we're going to start to reduce that noise. So sharpening has already been applied, so Lightroom applies some default sharpening. If we just turn that off and zoom in, you can see what that's done. So it's already made it look quite a lot better, but by sharpening the image, it also introduces more noise. It's always a bit of a trade-off. The more you sharpen it, the more noise you get, and the more you reduce the noise, the more your sharpness is reduced. So you need to find a sweet spot really between the two, it's a balancing act. What we're going to do, first of all, is just increase the luminance slider here under noise reduction. So when we do that, it just reduces the luminance level in the image, which is noise basically. So we could go all the way up to 100, and that makes the background look really nice and smooth. However, we've started to get this really weird plasticky look in the ladybird, so that's no good. What we need to do is just bring that back down, and I think a good trade-off is around about 20. It's going to depend on your image. 20 is not applicable to every image, it just works for this one. So you need to play around with that slider until it looks right. We haven't got rid of all the noise yet, there's still some in there. But the key thing is we've not got rid of all of the detail here. So what we're going to look at next is detail. Now this controls the luminance noise threshold. So it's useful when you've got a really noisy image. High values are going to preserve more of the detail in the image, whereas a lower value is going to give you a slightly cleaner looking image. It basically just, it's another trade-off, so it's like a fine, fine tuning tool. If you put it up, you're going to get more detail back, but, but you'll have more noise. And if you bring it down, you'll have less noise, but less detail. So again, it's about finding somewhere in the middle. I'm going to go about, I'm going to leave it on 50, I think. That's fine. And then below that, we've got contrast. So that will affect the level of contrast in the image. And it, again, it'll depend entirely on the image that you're working with. By increasing that, value of the contrast. You might get patchy or blotchy areas of colour, but it'll preserve the contrast and give you a bit more contrast. Lower values, 
might give you smoother, nicer results with less noise, but you might lose a bit of contrast in your image. So again, it's just playing around with your image. This particular one, I'm not losing any contrast really, so I'm just gonna leave it on zero. And then the color sliders, if we just turn this off, you can see we've got lots of nasty color noise in the background. So there's different types of noise. You've got chroma and luminance. Chroma is the color noise. By default, Lightroom automatically applies a little bit of color noise reduction. And it does a really good job of that. So I never really change those sliders. So that's okay for noise reduction now. I think what we're gonna look at now is the sharpening tools. So I'll zoom in on this area of the body because the background can be nice and smooth, but we want the detail still on the ladybird. So I'm gonna look at the ladybird here. Like I said, by default, Lightroom's applied sharpening of 40. We can bring that all the way up and you're gonna get all this really nice detail. But again, it's too much and we've got so much noise in the background now, that's no good. So again, it's about being subtle, bringing that back down. And I'm gonna to come to about 50. Again, good trade-off, I think. We've still got some noise in the background, but we've got the detail on the ladybird. Radius will just affect the size of that sharpening. So the higher you go with that value, the more your image is gonna look sharpened. And it all depends on your image. If you've got an image with lots of fine detail, you probably want to use a smaller radius. On images with large areas, you might get away with a larger radius. This is obviously a macro image. The ladybird's got quite a lot of fine detail. So I don't wanna go too high with my radius. I'm just gonna bring it up to about 1.5. Again, detail, that's gonna adjust how much the high frequency information is sharpened in the image. So at lower settings, it'll just remove the blur on edges. At higher settings, it's gonna start affecting patterns and uh, textures in the image. So if we bring this up, you'll see that the texture on the hairs under the body starts to come out there. But again, I don't wanna to go too high, so I think around about 50 is okay. Okay, so that's already looking better now, but it could still be better, particularly in the background, that could be much smoother. And these tools can be used in any type of image, not just macro. You can apply these to any genre of photography that's got, and where you've got noise in your image and it'll help to improve it. But in images, in macro images in particular, I find that a lot of them tend to be like this one here, where you've got a background that's thrown out of focus, big areas of flat texture or lack of texture. So it needs to be nice and smooth with no noise. And then you'll have a foreground subject, which is quite detailed. So what I like to do in macro images when I'm doing a little bit of sharpening and, and noise reduction is just to use some of the selective editing tools in Lightroom, just to sharpen my foreground subject, but bring down the noise in the background area. So you've got a bit more control. So depending on the image will depend on what I'll use. Sometimes I'll use brushes, sometimes I'll use the filters. For this one, I'm gonna use the radial filter, which is here. And I'm gonna draw an oval shape just to surround the ladybird. If you press O on your keyboard, that'll show you the area that's gonna get affected. So this red area is the area that's gonna get affected when I change the sliders. The bit in the middle will not get affected. I want to get as much as that, of that background covered with the red area as I can, but I don't want any areas of my ladybird covered up because I don't want, all I want to do at the moment is just reduce the noise in the background, but not reduce it in the ladybird because that's gonna reduce the sharpness there. So I'm just gonna further refine this by zooming in. I'm gonna click on brush here inside of the mask tool palette and then erase down here. And then I can actually use this to just start erasing the red areas that overlap the ladybird. So you can adjust the size of this brush by pressing the brackets on your keyboard, the square brackets just to the left of the return key. The left square bracket will make your brush smaller. The right bracket will start to make it bigger. 
and like I said, just get rid of those red areas that you don't want that are on the ladybird. Now obviously I could take a lot longer on this but it would be a very long and boring video so I'm just going to do this really quickly and you can take a little bit more time when you do it on your images. Okay that should do for now. So what I'm going to do is change the area affected by the red area there, just turn it off for now so you can see what's happening, and I'm going to bring down the clarity, because we don't need any clarity in the background, it's just a big flat blurry area, so we can get rid of all that noise by just bringing the clarity really down, and the texture, to around about there. And that's looking pretty good already, but we can also reduce the noise a bit by raising the noise slider. It's a bit counterintuitive because you go upwards to raise the noise. And if I close that now, that's looking pretty good, I think. We've got really nice smooth areas now in the background. But we've retained the detail in the ladybird. So that's how I edit macro images to remove noise and add sharpening. And if we just look at the difference now, that's how it started. And that's where we've got to with the editing. So some quite powerful tools, just in Lightroom, no Photoshop or anything else involved. But you can get some really good results just using the luminance and sharpening tools and a little bit of selective editing. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, why not give it a like? You can click on the thumbs up icon just down below and that'll really help me out. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you'd like to do so, then you can click on the big red button down there or on my face over here. And that way you'll keep up to date with what I'm doing each week. And there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you'll catch me for the next video. But until then, that's it and bye for now.